All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the best knife actions slash locks. Now, a lot of people spend time talking about uh, the best knife steels, thickness, blade shape, and certainly we do that here on this channel as well. But something that I feel no one else talks about is ranking the essentially locks and actions of knives because locks and actions can mean a tremendous amount about or can tell you a tremendous amount about the usability the case use and overall the application of any given blade so i thought today we would talk about uh, different locks and actions and of course unfortunately i don't have every single action out there there are definitely some that are more um kind of for show and kind of uh you know ones that are fun to look at and play with but not as usable and I also want to say that how I'm judging or grading this list isn't off of something like fidget factor, but primarily it's going to be based on lock strength, ease of use. It's going to be based off of lock strength, ease of use, intuitive action, and user safety. And what I mean by user safety, we'll break it down when we get into these locks a little bit more, but essentially that just means while you are using the lock, how safe is it to use? How safe is it to disengage, right? So a lot of locks, like say a liner lock, the blade directly comes across your fingers or comes in the pathway. So you have to disengage the lock, move your fingers, and then close the blade, right? There are some that are like the access lock where you don't have to do that. So anyways, let's jump into this list and I have 10 knives here with 10 different actions so yeah we'll talk about it or let's talk about it okay so the first one up and honestly I'm not gonna lie first place and second place in my mind are kind of a bit of a tie that it's more closely related to the individual knife that has this action as opposed to the knife itself so for first place, it is going to be the compression lock. Now the compression lock is essentially a reverse liner lock. However, the nice thing about the compression lock is that the locking tab that interfaces with the blade steel is actually underneath the stop pin. So it gives you an incredible amount of strength in this knife. And once again, and so once again, when it comes down to looking at this as far as blade strength, intuition, or like how easy it is to use and user safety this place is very high in all of those it's very easy to access the blade in multiple ways you can open it um, you know using several different methods once again the nice thing too similar to other locks we'll talk about none of your fingers are in the way of disengaging this lock so it is very safe about the only thing i dislike is it's not the most intuitive especially for someone who doesn't know what it is however it is very strong as well and arguably one of the stronger locks on this list. So the compression lock namely used by Spyderco is number one. Now like I said it is a really close really close call but the second one is going to be the axis or some form of the axis. Now for those who don't know the axis locks patent has expired so we are seeing a plethora of different companies such as Hogue using a similar design. This one's particularly called the Able Lock but there are many different companies out there with their own, you know, different styles and flavors of the axis lock, but essentially they are all this style. And basically what you have is you have this lock bar here that interfaces with the tang of the knife and locks it into place. This is another one that is incredibly strong in the right applications. And that's why I place this one slightly lower than the compression lock is because depending on the manufacturer and depending on the quality control, access locks can be more prone to failure than the compression locks. The compression locks are very straightforward. Once again, the piece of metal is locked between the stop pin and the interface surface on the blade. Whereas this, if it's not built up to snuff, can be fail you in hard use. So a good access lock is equally as strong as a compression, if not slightly stronger, but a bad access lock will be weaker. Anyways, that is the lock strength. Once again, as I can already demo here, the ease of use, and some people might say fidget factor, but I don't really consider this to be super fidgety. I mean, like it, it is a fidgety thing, but we're not really judging that. But the ease of use is definitely there. And one thing that I think is very important to note about the access lock is that it's intuition or its intuitive design makes it super easy for people who are new to knives to pick it up and use it. And then once again, the safety uh, while using this blade is very high because to disengage the access lock, you have to at least put one of your fingers 
on this torsion bar or this bar, the sock bar, and pull it back, which usually means most of the time all of your fingers are out of the way of the blade, making it very safe to use. So once again, your fingers are not coming across this thing. You're not gonna get bit by the blade. So because the place is so highly in all of those regards, it has to be high on the list. So that's the compression, that's the axis. The next one is for Debo model here, so I have something to show, is going to be an auto axis lock. But what I mean by auto truly is more, uh, or I'm trying to talk more about the button lock slash auto knives. So this one is an auto. I don't have any button locks at the moment. I have owned button locks in the past, namely button lock autos. And I will be adding another one to the collection, I'm sure, here soon. But anyways, so this is a button lock auto. We'll just pretend this is still technically an auto, just not a button lock. But anyways, button lock autos um, and autos as a whole, primarily talking about side opening autos and not OTFs because they're their own category, um, are pretty high up on the list because once again, outside of the spring and having to use sometimes an offhand to assist, though you can close most autos one-handed, it's just not the easiest. Um, these things are pretty high up on the list because once again, uh, especially with button locks, the idea is that your fingers are out of the way of the action when you're opening and closing it outside of, you know, using your hand um, to close the auto. But especially with button locks um, as a whole, your fingers are going to be out of the way of the lock. Most button locks are also pretty tough. Um, Overall, once again, not a whole lot of people are hard using and abusing button lock autos, but especially given the spring nature of the spring that's forcing the blade to be in the open position, plus the button lock itself, usually these are pretty tough locks to use or pretty, you know, you can be pretty hard on them. Um, but irregardless, um, they are really strong firing, the action is good, they're reasonably intuitive to use. Most of them, you know, especially button locks, are going to have an obvious button for you to hit and propel the blade out. Um, I think the only thing that kind of gets a partial ding on these is that one, the lock could be stronger, but you know, depends case per case basis. Some button locks are stronger than others. And then secondly is also the user safety. And it's ironically, um, once again, while you're closing the blade, it's not so much that the blade is prone to biting you um, in the direct manner that it would close on your fingers, but rather if you, for whatever reason, you know, try to open this and then it snaps back up or out, it could cut you in that process. So if you fail to properly close it, there could be a serious bite there. Um, also too, I think another thing that kind of detracts it, and I know especially is very prevalent with my auto Adamus, when I've handed this to friends who were knife people, I've had a handful of people genuinely have this knife jump out of their hands because they are not anticipating just how hard this thing hits. And once again, on camera, this might actually look like it's nothing because I, I know what to expect when firing it but uh, if you're not anticipating it this thing can literally generate enough force to jump out of your hand or create a shock factor that might scare the user um, while opening it so those are some things that kind of detract the auto um, it's not the easiest to use or safest to use uh, yeah all right so the next one up is going to be we're judging purely on action and this is the only action that i have in this and i made this in action because I I don't know where flippers really fit otherwise, but this is specifically flipper actions. And I think flipper actions, once again, it's kind of hard because we've been primarily talking about locks so far, but actions are a part of this. And while, um, and so generally the reason why I'm placing flippers kind of midway in this section is because the locks on many of these can be either really good, like there are some button lock flippers, but there's also a lot of frame lock flippers like this guy. And so as far as lockup goes and lock strength, it can go either way. There are also access lock flippers. There are compression lock flippers. So I would say that the strength is just somewhere in the middle um, because you have weaker and stronger flipper knives. But as far as it goes, when it comes to user interface, it's very easy to use flipper knives for the most part. Once again, some are easier to use than others, but for the most part, flippers are very easy to use, very safe to use. And for the most part, a well-tuned action is going to be a very user-friendly experience. And most of the time, 
um, especially because of the flipper nature, like when a flipper is extended, even if you are using something like a frame lock, these are going to be pretty safe to use because as you can see here, every time I unlock this blade, that flipper tab is hitting my thumb. So it would be very hard for me to genuinely cut myself on this blade unless, once again, I purposely was trying to do it. Um, the flipper def definitely adds like a level of security when the blade is traveling back to its home because that flipper tab will likely get caught up on the thumb, signaling the user to move it. So anyways, it is the only action. I kind of threw it right here in the middle of the list because I didn't really have a great spot for it. All right. Next one up is going to be the triad lock. Now the triad comes on many knives, primarily and predominantly either AD or Andrew Demko knives and or cold steel knives. But the uh, one we have exampled here is the Formax Scout. There are, some people may say this is too big to EDC and some people honestly have said they do EDC these Formax Scouts. But uh, this, this triad lock does come on a number of smaller, more pocket friendly blades that will probably feature on this channel. However, the triad is really what we're talking about specifically here. Now, some people might be throwing uh, comments already down in the comment section below about why am I placing the triad lock so low on this list. The primary reason why that is, is going back to how I'm judging this lock kind of rank. It's not solely on strength. If we were judging just off of strength, the triad would be at the top. The triad is an incredibly strong lock. However, the issue is it is not a very user friendly nor intuitive lock because it shares a lot of heritage with lockbacks. In addition to this too, it's not a very safe lock either because you have to put your thumb here so or you have to in some way disengage this so it's very hard to as you can see like try to disengage this in any way without having your fingers in that potential travel of the blade so it's not a very safe lock when it comes to disengaging now when it's engaged and it's locked up it's probably the safest lock in the world but when you're disengaging it to close the knife, once again, you usually need two hands and you will have to be mindful that the blade is going to likely come across where you're holding the knife. So that's some of the big reasons why I gave this triad lock a lower placement. I don't think that the triad itself is a poor lock as far as, like I said, strength goes, but it's not the most user-friendly and it's not the safest to operate. Um, so anyways, that is the triad lock. I will quickly mention, just a little honorable mention here, the lock back as a whole. The triad is a far more reinforced and heavy duty version of the lock back that does not, like it, it may seem like the lock back and the triad are similar. They are not. Um, the triad is much heavier duty. And as you can see by this, you know, lock bar, you can see it's a very thick overbuilt lock bar. So the triad is definitely a lot stronger but aside from the strength I would put the lock or yeah I'd put the lock back lower than the triad because it has less strength though still a good amount of strength but less strength than the triad and still shares all of the same issues that the triad would and that is you know it's not usually very easy to use you're usually going to need two hands to close it and once again your fingers will be in the pathway likely if you are releasing that blade um, so anyways, those are some things to keep in mind about the triad. That's why I placed it middle tier is because it is super strong, but it is not a super easy lock to use or super safe when closing it. All right. The next two, similar to the first two up, are going to be pretty much tied because they're largely the same idea, except for like the compression and the axis were very different. These two are super similar, but the first one up is going to be the frame lock. Now, this is kind of funny, and when I was doing this list, I was kind of, you know, really thinking about it because I was honestly, a lot of the knives that I own are frame locks, um, and some are flippers, but most of the knives I own are frame lock knives. And I think that's probably because so much of the knife community, especially your higher end knives, things like Hinderers, my Gavco custom nurse here, um, just so many knives out there, Chris Reeves and such are frame lock and namely titanium frame locks. So there's a lot of knives in the frame lock uh, realm. And I would say for the most part, when it comes to like everyday carry, these are perfectly fine. But it is worth noting that the frame lock as a whole, like the 
frame lock as a blade is not the best lockup or action out there. Um, there are, once again, things like the compression and access lock that do much better. So first off, it is worth noting that frame locks are not usually that strong. They're usually going to be on the weaker end of lock strength. Now, once again, if you're just cutting cardboard boxes, this isn't a huge deal. And that's why you see a lot of EDC knives using frame locks. It's not like that big of a deal that it's not super strong. Next thing though is that similar to the next lock we'll talk about and invariably whenever you go to unlock a frame lock you do have to concern yourself that the blade is or your lock and your blade are going in the same direction right so if you're unlocking and your thumb is right there or your hand is right there, you run a potential risk of cutting yourself. Now, granted, most good designs will try to get around this in some way, and that's why I usually appreciate very large, very generous finger choils, because once again, if your thumb is right there on the lock bar and this comes back, it's probably not going to cut you. However, it is going in that direction, so it can. So these are not the safest to use. Also, too, once again, talking about intuition or how intuitive this this lock system is to use, it is not the most intuitive. And then lastly, I think the biggest thing that I dislike about the frame lock, and actually why I should probably put it lower than I have, is because on a lot of um, frame locks, this one included, and my Chris Reeves, and many others, if there is no over stop trap, or sorry, over travel stop, like you can see on this guy right here, by this uh, little metal piece right in here, um, if there's no over travel stop, you can literally bend that lock bar so far out that you break it um, or at least damage the knife so it's important to note that like there is quite literally a weakness developed into um, this lock mechanism if there's no over travel stop now granted once again it's worth noting that there are a decent amount of knives out there that do have over travel stops included in them and uh, you know it's not on every frame lock but that is something worth noting and yeah so that's why that's why i placed it so low um, there are many fantastic knives and honestly great knives out there that come in frame locks and as i noted previously you know a lot of the knives i own are frame locks but the frame lock itself is not an amazing lock by any stretch all right, next one up is going to be the liner lock. Now the liner lock shares basically all of the essential pros and cons of the frame lock. Now the biggest differences here, I would say is that the frame lock is objectively a little bit stronger. And that's because if you look at it, um, I'll try to pull these two out and compare them side to side. Hopefully this will uh, show up well, but you can see on the liner lock, there is a lot smaller um, locking material. So when you lock the blade up, you are dealing with a very thin sheet of metal here. So there is potential if there is serious torque or stress put on the spine of this blade for that to fail more easily than a frame lock or your average frame lock because your average frame lock is going to have closer to like a quarter inch thick um, piece, usually titanium, but uh, steel you know really locked in there and granted both will fail under pressure but usually your liner lock will fail slightly before your frame locks next thing though that does kind of um, come in as a pro for the liner locks however is that because there is a handle there like there's handle material between the locking mechanism and the outside world these kind of have their own built-in over travel stop so you're not going to be able to physically break this by pushing the lock bar too far over so it's a pro and a con, like you have less locking material, but it is also naturally not as easy to accidentally break. So aside from that, once again, still a con that you have to put your finger directly in line with the action of the blade. So you could cut yourself if you're not paying attention uh, rather easily. And once again, too, um, it's not the most intuitive design. In fact, some people might find liner locks less intuitive because if you don't specifically see it, you might not even know how to unlock the blade. Um, moreover though, um, like I said, it shares a lot of similar properties with the frame lock. I will say though, 
Once again, similar to all these knives, there are companies that do frame locks, liner locks, access locks better than others. I will say I do like Emerson quite a bit. As you can see, um, one thing that I feel a lot of companies when they do liner lock knives get wrong is they really try to recess the locking um, bar and it makes it very hard to get in there. That is one thing that Emerson's done very well with this. As you guys can clearly see by this shiny bit here, that is your lock bar. It is super easy to find, depress, and close pretty easily. So, uh, like I said, each company does it differently, but Emerson usually does a pretty good job. All right, next one up is the OTF. Now this is the out the front, and this is also an automatic similar to our previous automatic in legal standings, but this is different, much different in its setup. Now there are different types of OTFs out there. This is a double action, um, which just means that you have spring power to both open and close your knife. There are single actions out there like the Microtech Halo series, and that is a single action, which means the spring only fires that you have to manually retract it with a uh, like a tool that is built into the knife. So, you know, there are pros and cons to each, but we are just gonna be talking about the double action because it's the most pre prevalent, pervasive, and uh, most common style out there. Now, the reason why I place this so low is that once again, similar to the triad lock, this is a very strong lock. And once the blade is in its locked state, it is very hard to break these because they are physically locked into the handle material. And so long as the handle material isn't cheap, like pot metal, like if it's high, high grade alloy aluminum like this, it's going to be incredibly tough. And this guy I actually do use occasionally for wilderness and survival tasks. However, its lock strength is pretty much the only good thing about it. Once again, this is a very hard to use blade. It is very intuitive to know how to deploy it, but you have to have the physical thumb strength or finger strength. And it's not uncommon to see people two hand it because they cannot muster the strength to actually close or open the blade. So it's a big knock against it. Um, the safety is reasonably there, but also I kind of give it a ding for safety because once again, for the uninitiated that don't realize the blade comes out the front, it is very easy to accidentally have foreign objects in front of the blade and it come out. That can do two things, obviously injure whatever thing is in front of the blade, but also two, that would literally cause the uh, blade to fail to go into battery. So it's definitely a, a, a big con for it. Now, the next thing, of course, is the durability of this lock. It is not super durable because if anything or any foreign bodies enter this, such as dirt, dust, uh, mud, it can quickly and will very quickly jam up. And one thing that's really problematic, even if you have a OTF that doesn't have proprietary screws, is trying to take this thing apart. There are tons of springs in here. The action is rather complex, at least in comparison to all of these other actions. And so it is not super easy to field clean or to make reliable. And lastly, these are just not super reliable locks. Um, this one is a good one and occasionally um, you will get good OTFs, but even from Microtech, as much hype as many of the influencers will say, um, Microtech Ultratechs, unless you really take good care of them, are very prone to developing just, you know, intermittent lock failure. Um, so yeah, definitely not my favorite. And for all of those reasons, it places as low as it does. It is reasonably usable, but definitely needs to be um, cautioned. All right, next one up, and this one may or may not really belong on the list, but I figured it was worth it. And that is the Browse blades, silent soldier, or really just fixed blades as a whole. And fixed blades are technically not really an action, but they are worth talking about because there's so many fixed blades out there. Now I tried to choose a small EDC typed fixed blade, which is why I chose the Browse blade silent soldier. But this one is this low on the list because in fairness, the silent soldier is actually pretty EDCable. But the reason why I place fixed blades so low on the list is predominantly because they are hard to carry. Um, outside of this guy that is very small, most fixed blades that are going to be of usable normal length, once again, because they don't fold in half, they are usually pretty darn hard to truly properly EDC and carry. Now, as far as it goes, they can also 
Uh, they're usually pretty safe to use. Obviously, they're going to be like a 10 out of 10 in durability because it's a fixed blade. Um, unless there's something, you know, really wrong with it, you're not going to be able to easily break it. Um, and as far as uh, putting it away or use in, you know, like closing it, so to speak, or sheathing it, it's moderate. It really depends more on the sheath and on the blade shape. If you're running some double-edged dagger, it might be a little bit more tricky and a little less safe. But uh, overall... Uh, like I said, I just primarily ding the fixed blade because it's just hard to carry. And once again, even a very carryable fixed blade, such as this Browse Blade Silent Soldier, you're losing a lot of blade length and handle length. I mean, you know, this is a pretty EDCable package, but so is this. And when you open up this uh, DECA, you can see that it absolutely dwarfs the little Browse Blade Silent Soldier. So those are some of the big... Um, problems that you run into when running fixed blades. All right. All right, last of the last and the worst of the worst, 10 out of 10, is the slip joint knife. Now, the reason why I place the slip joint in this category or I place it as low as I do, and for those wondering, this is a GEC or Great Eastern Cutlery um, pocket carver, but uh, the reason why I place it so low and I don't actually have any EDC um, slip joints is because I consider this to be the worst in all categories judged. So this is going to be literally close to a zero in all of categories. So what I mean by that, obviously there's no locking mechanism, so it's automatically a zero out of 10 for locking. Two, um, when it comes to opening and intuitiveness and use, these can often be very difficult. Most of them are nail nicks, you few very few slip joints actually have, you know, thumb studs for like one-handed deployment. And usually because there is such a heavy lock or um, spring bar in the back, usually opening this is a two-handed affair. And especially with something like this pocket carver where the blades are thin and narrow, it's very hard to hold on to them. So this is not something I'd recommend for a, like a new person to knives. Be very easy to cut yourself. In fact, I've cut myself on this knife multiple Multiple times, especially the main blade, because as you guys can see there, the lock bar on this, or the spring bar, I should say, is just very, very stiff. Um, and once again, that's good because that means it keeps it in place. So it's, you know, not going to just close in on your fingers, but you know, it is not super easy to open. So anyways, uh, lastly, it's not very intuitive, not very safe. And the ease of closing it, once again, if you're not careful while closing this knife, you can easily cut yourself. Now, luckily with most lockbacks, it's kind of, or sorry, not lockbacks, but, um, with most slip joints, it is kind of hard to cut yourself because there's so much force required. Like how I close this thing is I usually pinch it around its handle and press up with my off hand to close it like that. So I'm not putting any part of my hand in front of this blade during its closing operation, but certainly it would not be unthinkable to have like a thumb or part of your finger or hand, you know, in the way of the blade while it closes. So anyways, because of that, it is basically zeros in all of those categories and so I really do not like EDCing uh, slip joints. Now once again if you're doing it for heritage, for style, um, you know if you really like slip joints as a whole or maybe you have like your old granddad's slip joint there's nothing wrong with them it's just objectively speaking they're substantially worse than everything else here. So anyways that's why they placed 10 out of 10. All right, guys, that's basically knife actions, locks, all that kind of stuff ranked. Now, like I said, I don't have everything and I'm going to get more blade locks and designs and stuff. And so I may end up updating this list in the future. But this does cover a vast bulk of knife designs out there. Even just talking about frame locks and liner locks probably covers a good 80% of the whole EDC knife realm. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.